That's when we take cover. On this episode of Bondi Vet. There's definitely an abnormality there. Could this lovable Rottweiler puppy be hiding a devastating deformity? Then that could have catastrophic impacts upon the rest of his life. She cannot be real. Where are they hiding the batteries? Chris plays delivery man for some very precious cargo. Big day. This way. Come on. And what on earth has this greedy Labrador eaten this time? As you name it, a Labrador can swallow it. Oh dear. Rocks. You make my world a better place. <laughs> come on, there's your girl. You know, become yeah. a star. <laughs> In Richmond, Andy, Nikki, and their son Daniel are taking four month old Chewy for a stroll in the park. Come on then, Chewy. Already, the young Rottweiler has become best mates with 31 year old Daniel, whose autism affects his ability to connect with people. It's very hard for Daniel to make friends because of him being non verbal. It's really hard for him to sort of communicate. But with Chewy, it's unconditional love. Pets don't judge on the noises that Daniel makes. It's like having a sibling for Daniel. Hi guys, how's it going? Hi Chewy, hi my puppy. How are you? How you doing, gorgeous boy? Today, Scott has come to meet the latest addition to the family. Exactly well. Hi Daniel, how are you? You okay? Good to see you, mate. I first met Nikki and Andy when they brought in Woody. Woody and Chewy are different dogs in personality. Woody was a very anxious, nervous boy. Chewy, as you've seen, is this affectionate love sponge. He just runs up at you and wants to lick you in the face. You're doing such a good job for Daniel. Yes, you are. Yes. Woody recently died from cancer. Scott has helped everyone through the difficult grieving process. I know you put a smile on your face, a brave smile on your face, but I just think it's wonderful that Chewy has brought a real lightness and real happiness back into the family. Yeah. Great for Daniel, Both. but great for you guys as well. What's so clear is their love of dogs and how much dogs have given to their family. And I'm just really glad that although we've lost Woody, we've gained this beautiful ball of joy, which is Chewy. Sit. Good boy. But just as Daniel is getting over losing Woody, the family now worries his new companion could have serious health issues. When we first got him home, and then I sort of looked, I said to my mum, I said, I'm sure his eye's popping out. Yeah. So certainly it's, it's very prominent, isn't it, the eye? Because the top of the eye, that bone, the zygomatic arch, is pushed down, right? Yeah. So it's behind the eye, so it's pushing the eye out. As a newborn puppy, Chewy was savagely bitten by his own mother, leaving him with a deformed skull. I mean, you can see that real depression there. That's the main issue. Whereas like, obviously, let's see that. So there's the real difference there versus nothing there. Scott's worried that this tragic injury could have some devastating consequences. Mainly what I'm concerned about is the deformity to his head may lead to ongoing seizures in later life. And it could really impact on the quality of this beautiful little puppy's life. Come on, buddy. It's a friendship and a companionship that Daniel would be lacking in if he didn't have Chewy. You can't really put that into words. Come on in. Let's go, mate. Next day, Andy's bringing in Chewy to Scott's Isleworth practice for some further investigation of his concerning abnormality. Hi there, Andy. Oh, Scott. Hi, hi, hi Chewy. Hi, hi, how are you? Scott. How are you? When we first picked Chewy up, the first thing I'd done was to ask the breeder what was going on with the dog. All he could explain to me was apparently that he believes the mother bit Chewy when he was suckling too hard on her nipple. Come on then, buddy. Let's go, good boy, come on. <laughs> We're not dating. This is not dating. It's a different kind of relationship. It's professional, all right? Let's keep it professional. 
And he was like this from when you got when him, was he? him up, yeah. Besides his head, Chewy has other permanent injuries inflicted by his mother soon after birth. Mum bit in there as well. Oh, that is, uh, that's, that's not normal. Like... Clearly there's been some sort of break or dislocation in the past. She oh. also bit him on the leg by the looks of it there. She looks like she had a proper go at him. Chewy seems to have a mixed bag of quite significant deformities at such a young age. Makes me concerned about his whole development. We want to make sure this fellow's going to be all right. Don't we, mate? Got a few good years with playing around, enjoying yourself with Daniel and all sorts of stuff going on there. There's a lot of different types of autism. Fortunately, my son has the severest. And Chewy, he seems to understand my son. Just got to look at him and he can understand how he's behaving, how his temperament is and what he's thinking. And they just give Daniel a much better life. Hopefully he's going to be OK and... Yeah. yeah. I think the plan is, Andy, that we want to just understand what's happened with Chewy yeah. and just work out what's going on with his head there. We'll also have a look at his tail. And the best way to do that, of course, is with x-ray. Yeah. So we'll be giving him a little bit of sedation, more to rest that tongue than anything else. Might have a look at your leg as well, and we'll go from there. Does that sound good? Lick one for yes. Oh, good. Perfect. Ah. Oh, oh, my gosh. To understand all of Chewy's various concerns, I'm pretty much going to x-ray from top to bottom his head, his leg, and then the tail as well. Good boy. X-ray. Just try and take an x-ray with the left side uppermost. I am looking for problems, but I'm really hoping that these problems won't be life-limiting. This is a lovely dog in a lovely family that deserve a break, so I really hope that I'm not going to be delivering bad news. Okay. Mm. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised at what I'm looking at here because the x-ray is showing relatively normal anatomy. The bony plates of the skull are actually still intact and there doesn't seem to be any impact on the space that his brain inhabits, so that's great news. And then on top of that, we've x-rayed his foot and x-rayed his tail. Foot's absolutely fine. The tail was a dislocation, possibly just a mild little break, but it's healed. It's healed at a wonky angle, but the whole dog is wonky. But you know what? I couldn't think of a better family to look after Chewy. This is a special dog and a very special family. Yeah. Oh, you're a lovely boy. You are a lovely boy. Even though your face is a little bit, let's call it characterful. Yes. All right. Let's call Daddy. Andy has arrived to be reunited with Chewy, anxiously hoping for good news. This dog has only been in our life a short amount of time, but I can trust me, we love him. Absolutely love this dog, for sure. It's your big baby. Oh, hello, young man. Oh, hiya. Hi, Daddy. Oh, you all right? Hi, Daddy. How are you doing? You all right? Okay? You all right? Oh, big kisses for Dad. Yeah, big kisses. Oh, lovely. Well, Scott, you've been asleep for a little bit, have you? So your dog does have three abnormalities, okay? Has an issue with his head. He's got a slight wound on that right foreleg. And then also the tail but actually none of them will have an impact on his life. Good news, everything else looks perfectly normal, absolutely. Oh, smashing. That's brilliant, Scott. Thank you. That's what we needed to know. That's what we needed to know, buddy. <laughs> I feel static. Everything's going to be fine. So I think the whole family's going to be really, really chuffed about this now, really chuffed. It's going to have the best of life that we can possibly give him. Thanks for all that, Scott. You put my mind at rest. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. It's really amazing to reunite Chewy to Andy and to give him all the good news. I'm sure tonight that Daniel will be overjoyed to have Chewy in his arms and hopefully they should live a long and happy life together. I really all right. appreciate all the best. Thank you. See you later. Bye, bud. Come on, Ed. Let's go. Go see Mum. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Hero appears to be in perfect health, but looks are deceiving. He's lost his appetite today, so very unlike a Labrador. So um, we suspect he has ingested rock. 
The one-year-old Labrador has been vomiting all day. Owners Sally and Michael are worried Hero's been up to his old tricks, eating rocks from their backyard. He'll eat anything he can get his mouth on to, so yeah, that's why, just in case we'll bring him in. It always amazes me how Labradors can be really, really sick and they just look like nothing's wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Okay, come on, come on. They have such an ability to hide things and keep that tail wagging and pretend like everything's okay yeah. when really they're actually very, very sick. And the fact that they're such good actors can actually be quite dangerous for them. Something is a little bit uncomfortable for him here. His intestines just feel a little bit thick. They eat everything. I've seen them eat socks, underwear, sanitary items, rocks, balls, toys, you name it. A Labrador can swallow it whole and it never surprises me what I find inside them. When I get to a certain part of his tummy, mm -hmm. he tends to flinch. That's not good, please. I think what we need to do is take some x-rays of him. I'm feeling him, it just, it doesn't feel right. There, there is something really hard there. Come on, let's get some x-rays. And if something is stuck, well, that's really not good for him. You're a doofus. This way, come on, come on. Whoa. Hero, this way, come on. Come on. So the next step is to actually take an x-ray of Hero and I don't know how I'm going to do this. Come on Hero, this way. This dog has complete control of me. He is taking me for a walk, he is taking me for the x-ray. I don't know how I'm going to even get him on the table. Vic, are you free to help with this very sick dog? Three, two, one. Lie down on your side. You were happy to do it before. Labradors are very, very good at pretending that something's okay when it's really wrong. <laughs> oh dear. I thought I felt something funny in there. But that's a, a really massive rock there. Another little fragment of something there and perhaps even another one further down there. So uh, this rock is about three to four centimetres big, so... It's like that. So he's obviously swallowed that hole, it's gone down, and now it's lodged somewhere in his intestines. That is a worry, Vic. So it may not pass by itself. I don't know if it will. If that rock stayed in there and it didn't pass out naturally or we didn't take it out with surgery, the intestines would become really inflamed and unhealthy, uh, and in really severe situations, they can perforate. The rock can basically open up the guts and um, he's just got intestinal contents leaking through his abdomen. That's called peritonitis, that's life-threatening, so it's pretty serious to have something stuck in there that doesn't come out. That thing is so big and rugged and I don't think it's going to move, so poor Hero's going to need surgery. Come on, buddy. I cannot believe that you are sick. My goodness. All right, so... Unfortunately, it looks like he's got a big rock in his intestines. Okay, so it's about this big. Now, sometimes if the rocks are small, we can watch them and see if it will pass. And I think it's worth giving him a chance to see if he does pass it by himself. But my gut feeling tells me that it's too big to fit through. And I think that he probably will have to have surgery. Okay. Now if we do nothing and it stays there, it will wear through his intestines and it can perforate his intestines and there's even a chance it's already done that. We just need to be very, very careful and watch him closely. I never really wanted him to have an operation because operation's never good like in the long term, so... Yeah, well, has to be done. <laughs> yeah, sad. <laughs> Just get focused, you might be having surgery today. I, I Next morning at Sash, Hero is still just as happy and blissfully unaware how close he is to going under the knife. Good boy, Hero. 
We just have to take an x-ray of Hero today as a precaution because we're all prepped and ready to take him into surgery. We want to make sure that the rock is where it was last night. Okay, Hero. Hero, just stay here. Look, the rock is about four centimetres big and it was stuck in his small intestines. I really don't think that that rock has moved at all. All right, so this is Hero's last chance to avoid surgery. Hear that, Hero? This is it. Oh, wow. That is amazing. This rock or bone or whatever it is has gone all the way from his small intestines down into his large intestines, into his colon, and it's sitting now in his rectum. It's like that far of coming out on its own. Wow. If you look at last night's picture, you can see just how far it's traveled. I mean, it's gone his whole intestinal tract in less than 12 hours. I'm just blown away. Hero has dodged one bullet, but getting out that rock is going to be no walk in the park. I don't think that this is going to be a pleasant thing for him to be pooping out. It looks pretty rugged and rough on the edges and um, it's four centimetres big, so um, good luck to Hero. So one of the joys of my job involves putting a little bit of lubrication up a dog's bottom to try and get them to pass a rugged rock. Now, he might lose his dignity while it's all happening, but unfortunately, that's what happens when you eat rocks. I'm so sorry. I promise I will be as gentle as I can. I'm just going to see what I can feel. Oh, there it is. It is this far from coming out. It is, like, poking out. OK, Hero, I know. I know. Oh, OK, there's something. Oh, what that is? It feels like a bone. There's more in there, so I'm going in again. OK, so this is the big piece. Just slowly, slowly. Sorry, Hero. Nearly there. I know. I know. It's really big, this thing. Come on, Hero. Just if you push, it would help. Just like giving birth. Yeah. I'm trying to grip this thing and I'm really trying hard not to hurt him, so I don't think it's as easy as I originally had thought. OK, here we go. Here we go. That's all right, Hero. There you go. Good oh my boy. god. That's Good a rock. Boy. What is that? Good boy. I cannot believe that this rock was swallowed whole, passed through his esophagus, down his stomach, into his intestines, and out the other end without causing any damage. That is a really, really lucky outcome. Okay, Hero. You see this? This is a rock. This belongs in the garden, not in your mouth or in your stomach or in your butt. OK? Yes, thank you. You've done a very good job, my man. A very good job. Let's go. Come on, Hero. <laughs> good boy, come here. Hero, the rock-eating lab, is ready to go home with his relieved owners, Michael and Sally. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. I have a little present for you guys. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at that, huh? Dude. That is what came out of him. Oh, yes. Not using it again. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, indeed you are. <laughs> so what are we going to do about these rocks at home? Oh, we've got the landscaper coming in this weekend. Yeah. So Clean they're going everything. to like... Getting rid of them? Yes. Yeah, and they're paving the whole garden. Ah. Oh. we a little pit of like grass for him. Fantastic. Do anything. Right. Hero, we won't tell any of your friends what happened to you here. It can be our little secret, OK? Oh. Yeah. You just <laughs> wag your tail in my face. <laughs> yep, yep. I know that area very well, so we'll just keep that butt away from me. <laughs> Thank you. Pity for them, they'll have to redo their whole backyard. It's going to cost a fortune, and that's all because Hero has a taste for rocks.
asked me what my favourite animals in the world are, then one of them would have to be the cheetah. We don't get too many of them coming through the doors at Bondi, though, so when the opportunity came up to see a three-month-old cub, I wasn't exactly going to say no. Chris is an owl from Adelaide at Monato, Australia's largest open-range zoo. Waiting for him there is a very special baby. She's about to sit the biggest test of her life. Hi. Hi. How are you? Going good. Nice I'm Chris. How Michelle. are you? Hey, Michelle. Welcome to Monato. Thank you. It's the big day. <laughs> yeah. Little I'm girl's leaving home to become yeah. a star. <laughs> Hey, little one. Hey. Hey, Donna. How are you going? Great. How are you? Good. I walk in and my first reaction is, where are they hiding the batteries? She cannot be real. She's ridiculous. Her name is Quatili and she's being hand-raised because her mum just ran out of milk. Quatili means regal princess in Swahili. She's the first cheetah to be born at the zoo in eight years and keepers Michelle and Donna are now the cubs' surrogate mums. We share a really special bond with Quatili. I've worked with Cheetah for a lot, a lot of years, uh, sort of focusing on them and their breeding. And uh, to finally have a one little Cheetah cub born is um, so special, knowing that they're so endangered. They're Africa's most endangered big cat. So to be able to spend time with a precious little Cheetah cub is, uh, makes you very thankful. That's a good girl. Today, Chris is getting involved in the daily training of the baby, and that includes meeting strangers. Six foot five blonde strangers. She's handling me being here. Yep, she's doing very, very well. She's accepting that you're stroking her and it's not worrying her at all. And that's really good and important for us to do veterinary examinations on her in the future. There are big plans for this little one. The keepers are hoping that she'll become the poster girl for Adelaide Zoo. She'll educate the public about the plight of the cheetah, but she'll also do meet and greets with people. To do that, she's gonna have to pass some tests. And Quatili's exams start today. So if today's gonna go well, Zebby's gonna play a big part. Absolutely. Zebby <laughs> ke keeps Tilly calm during the car trip. Yeah. And this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ultimate karma. <laughs> it's an interesting mix. <laughs> Mothers at home with kids having trouble getting down to the local shops. Let's need these. <laughs> so now we'll get her into the box. Yep. Guys nervous? <laughs> no, all good. Yeah, look, She'll be give fine. Give me a calm face, yeah. I like it. All right, Tilly, Tilly, come, come, come. Zebby's in there. Cool. So is this. Here we go. All right. And you've got a big day today. You're leaving home for the first time. Clearly, Tilly's not one for nerves, but in the big scheme of things, today's big. So it's probably good not to waste any of that nervous energy right now. To travel with Quatili down to Adelaide Zoo can be a stressful situation because you've got an animal which is very much wild, very instinctual, put into a pet pack, hearing noises and seeing trucks go past and things is different for her. So uh, yeah, we'll see how she copes with it. So if you just, yeah, preface her that way. Preface her? Yeah. Preface her in? Yep. That way. You can sort of sit in there with her and she can look out and be reassured by one of us. OK, ready to go? We're ready. See you in Adelaide. This is really make or break for Quatili right now. If she freaks out in the car and can't make the journey to Adelaide, she just can't be a part of the program. Chris has arrived at Adelaide Zoo with the precious three-month-old Quatili. The baby cheetah has passed her first big test. You've got to remember, this is the first time that Quatili has ever left her home at Monato. She's a wild animal. It's not normal for her to be inside a car, but it's incredible how well she's handled it. Not missing home yet, are you? Now, an even bigger test. How does she handle a totally new enclosure? Hi, guys. Hey. How are you going? How are you going? Hi. You're a welcoming committee. Yes, I'm the welcoming committee. <laughs> Thank you. Today, Quartili is auditioning for a role as an ambassador at the zoo, where she will interact with the public. But she needs to cope with the new environment. You guys ready? Sure yeah. am. This Nervous? is it. <laughs> so what we're looking for is her to walk out and just be calm, prowl around, but just generally seem quite happy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Here we go. Here you go. Hey. 
straight between the legs. <laughs> <laughs> it was the quickest way. Yeah. <laughs> She's loving that. So if she was stressed, she wouldn't be playing. Yeah. She's having a, a wonderful time. She's taken fabulously. She's running around like a little cheetah should at this age and playing and having a ball and totally relaxed. The crucial thing here is that she's able to follow and really listen to her keepers. It's almost like a cheetah version of puppy training, but if they don't get it right now, then when she's fully grown and really able to cause some damage, it could get really dangerous. Tilly, come, come. All right, and now ask come. her to sit. Sit, sit, Tilly, sit. The reason that we're doing the training is so that people can get up close and personal with this cheetah, so that she will sit and she will come when we call her and we can allow people then to go in with her and, and have a wonderful experience um, of meeting a, an endangered species. I said good dog, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same as dog training though, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, Tilly, you're very different. Quatilli is following those commands really, really well. I mean, you have to remind yourself that she's a cheater. She'd put some two hours to shame. Quatilli. Quatilli. If she was to go on to become uh, an ambassador for Cheetah, I have no worries that she would be awesome and be a little star for sure, <laughs> because um, she already is. She's just fabulous. You look at Quatili and she's still so young and so innocent and so naive to the problems that the rest of the species is facing. But you look at her and you realise they've got a pretty good ambassador there. Hello Elvis, it's your lucky day. At the Australian Reptile Park, General Manager Tim Faulkner and his fearless keepers are about to feed Elvis. Hello, Elvis. Look at this, buddy. On the menu, a massive side of beef. All animals require enrichment, and that's stimulation that is something different than what they do on any normal day. Now, this big food item for Elvis, it's going to get him excited, it's going to get his blood boiling, but it's also going to stimulate him and stimulate him into doing some natural behaviours, grabbing it, drowning it, and, exciting for us, death rolls and head shakes. So the idea is, once he grabs it, hopefully he rolls. Yeah. Breaks a bit off, and that's our cue. Get in there, get it out. He cannot eat that whole thing or he's not going to eat for a year. That's the plan. But for Tim and Mike to get the meat to the edge of the water safely, Mick needs to distract Elvis. Come on. Come on, mate. Luring him to the other side of the pool. Come on, buddy. Yeah, yeah come on, come on. Whoa! It's a dangerous task. One wrong move and Mick could end up an entree. Elvis is fired up. He's in attack mode. Mick is trying to get his attention, splashing the water, trying to get Elvis to turn. I don't want to move before he does because he's going to launch out of the water. Come on, mate. Good boy. Come on. And if history is anything to go by, this cranky croc won't think twice about making a meal of Mick. Elvis has eaten a lot of strange things. A lawnmower, his girlfriends, and he's even eaten a camera. Where is he, Mick? Oh, he's at the corner, he's at the corner. OK. Tell us when he's coming, Mickey. Yep, very good. Sit him down, nice and close. Yep. OK, he's at the corner. He's going to bring him around. I'm just going to jump in front of you for a second. Yep. Come on, Al. Come on, mate. Mick's done his job beautifully. Elvis is fired up and he's coming fast. Now, Mike and I have got to grab the side of beef and launch it to Elvis. But who knows what he might do? I don't want him charging out of the water at us. That's what I'm worried about. Ready? Right. He's What's coming in. Three. Yeah. On the right back. Nice. Once he grabs it, the first thing he does is takes it straight underwater and tries to drown it. He's got it. Oh, look at that. 
While Elvis is drowning his prey, we need to now get the rope around the tree. Tie it off, keep some pressure on it, because that's what he wants to feel, that there's still that pressure there, that it's a big food item. It'll make it feel bigger, and he'll go into a death roll. How good was that? And powerful. You can see him starting to move. Here he goes. Wow, that was incredible. Now, he didn't just roll once, but a few times. Crocs use the death roll because they don't have a knife and fork like us. They need to be able to roll and roll and break through bone, muscle, tissue, sinews, and break off a piece that's small enough for them to swallow. And that's about the size of a basketball. Oh. Straight through the ribs. Good boy. That's where we want. Oh. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> hey. There we go. That's a good one. All we're waiting for now is for him to break that last corner off. He might do another roll or two, but then he's just going to shake it off. That's when we take cover. Here he goes. Yeah, boys. Got it. Let's get it. Elvis has ripped a piece off about the size of a football. Now, he has to come up to swallow it or it'll take a lung full of water. Now, before he does that, we've got to get that big chunk out or he's not going to eat for a year. Chunk out. Yep, got chunk it. out. Beauty. That was amazing. Crocs, truly awesome. And he's unharmed. We're unharmed. We got to see a side of Elvis that we wanted to see. And what makes me happiest is just thinking about how Elvis must feel right now. Good. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Got it, rolled it, ate it, and burped. Yeah, classic <laughs> croc, eh? Yeah, that's yeah. great. Thank you. Good boy. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, then check out our Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com for a great range of Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.